Power to Serve, a reflection for the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel reading, James and John make a bold request for places of honor on either side of Jesus. Not surprisingly, their ambitious behavior stirs up resentment among the other disciples, and Jesus summons them all for a critical lesson. First, he reminds them of the leadership style of Gentile rulers who lord it over their charges. Then he applies the corrective, but it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. Finally, he presents himself as the model to follow. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We can easily imagine James and John goading each other into ambition and indiscretion. Despite their allegiance to Jesus, these sons of thunder remain brothers and most likely brothers close in age. Jesus knows them well and probably smiles as he says, you do not know what you are asking. He understands that they have not thought it through, have not counted the cost. Even when he warns them of the cup he must drink and the baptism he must undergo, metaphors for his coming passion and death, they insist on their readiness to follow him on the path to glory. Jesus finally explains that they will indeed share his fate, but that he cannot promise them seats at his right and left. Listening all along, the other disciples now claim the moral high ground, shaming the brothers for their cheek. Jesus knows them well. He understands that each one has pondered his own position in the coming kingdom and shares in the shame now projected on James and John. Citing the negative example of the Gentile rulers lording it over their people, he calls the disciples to a different vision of power and leadership. The second reading from Hebrews gives us a glimpse Though Jesus has passed through the heavens to the glory of the Father's right hand, the concrete memory of his humiliation and suffering continues to shape his exalted role as high priest advocating for his people before God's throne. This vision gives us confidence. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been similarly tested in every way, yet without sin. Isaiah sheds light on this testing, calling it infirmity, affliction, and suffering. The prophet reflects a Jewish belief emergent in his time that one person could take on the sins of the people, giving his life as an offering for their atonement. The final line, through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, sets up an echo in the gospel reading that the Son of Man, Jesus, has come to give his life as a ransom for many. Truly, on his own road to greatness, Jesus has become both servant and slave, giving up all his power for the salvation of all. Power comes in different forms, political, economic, religious, social, personal, and intellectual, all with the potential to do good or evil. Even in the time of Jesus, power over others in the hands of the few led to oppression and injustice for the many. Jesus certainly possessed great power. 
yet during his earthly life, he chose to share it, empowering others to turn their lives around, follow in his way, and carry on his mission to proclaim God's reign. He chose power with rather than power over others. As baptized disciples empowered by the Spirit of Jesus, we have the same choice to make.